Hey, hello, welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 2 as we continue our playthrough of Faction Wars. So in the previous episode we've just seen the emergence of Voland, who uh, in particular has 21 Bone Dragons, but also has 34 Power Liches. Both of those stacks very scary. Um, just an all-around quite terrifying hero. Uh, plus 3 luck. 126 spell points. Not entirely sure how we deal with him. I think we have three essential options. The first option is we just avoid him, um, which is not a good option for obvious reasons. He will just go through the desert, take our towns. Obviously not a good choice. Second option is a bit weird, but I do wonder if we were to just... Because we've already seen that he will choose not to attack our main. If we just follow him around, we could finesse things in such a way that another hero could bring us some backup units and we could wait until that happens and then choose to attack him. And then the third option is we just go for the attack, uh, and I think that's probably the one I'm leaning towards, because we can get slightly stronger than we currently are. It has been pointed out to me that the golden bow actually isn't needed if you have the expert archery skill. I'm not sure when exactly this effect gets incorporated into the archery skill, but that's good to know. It's effectively redundant, so we have the ability to pick up a couple of extra artifacts. Of course that does mean if we do defeat him we can't take his artifacts, but I think that's fine. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by taking the town of Blackburn. Then let's have a look what's in here. So just a level 1 mage guild. Does come with a pyramid. Does come with a thieves guild too. So with a blue player, so we can see orange is actually considered stronger than us. Still, there is just one hero, and most of our forces are concentrated with our main. Okay, so actually 7 cyclops available. 12 war trolls, 16 ogre lords. Hard to tell which is better between the Cyclops and the Ogre Lords. I think because we have 43 crystals, this is going to be better than the Nomads. So I think we go into the town. Do we have enough movement points to go to the Idol? We definitely do. Okay, so we go to that next. Then we're going to go across ready to take this guy on. There's no one else that can reach us other than Atlas. If we look in here, not worth recruiting level 1 heroes. So go back to Atlas, we're going to go up, join these two together, and we're going to try and be a bit more selective about which artifacts we bring. So Lucky Rabbit's Foot, we currently have plus 2 luck, so we could make use of that. Let's take that for now. Other things we have Actually, we have two Lucky Rabbit's Foot. I assume that you don't need to worry too much. Actually, no, I stand corrected. Two Lucky Rabbit's Foot doesn't work. You have to have different types of artifacts. Good to know. Okay, so other things. We don't need the Elemental Ring. This thing is plus three defense. I think that is definitely worth having. This is plus two. Immunity to Paralyze doesn't really help us. Half damage from lightning spells could be good. Maybe we just go for the plus two defense though. Technically we don't need this for now. This might be overkill, but this is going to be a tough fight, so I think... Take everything we can. So yeah, let's go ahead and take this for the extra stats. Even the Nomad Boots. What else could we take instead? So fire spells aren't going to do too much damage, ice spells can do, lightning spells can do too. It is possible he has chain lightning. So for that reason I think this is the safest bet. Okay, do we go for this now? I think before we decide, let's just go ahead and move the rest of our heroes, just get that done. So this guy is going to pick up some gold. Gold is starting to become a bit of a problem in this playthrough now that we've started spending it. Uh, we don't really need that, that's kind of annoying. Now that we've started spending it on diplomacy, we need to find more gold from other sources. This is quite concerning to me. Deep is on his way back to the town. There are defenders in there already. It is day four. So he's going to need a few more days to make that even stronger, but still. I was hoping we could get there first. Doesn't seem to be possible. If we go to the gazebo, we currently have... Well, we just need a thousand XP to level up, so that does work. Since we can't get to this town first either way, 
don't think teleport helps us that much. Could go for the extra attack and the defense and then attack. That might be overkill, but I think it might be worth a go. Okay, this guy next. Let's go for some more gold. Four leaf clover. That is something we can make use of. Okay, lots of pikemen. Two lots of lots of pikemen. Let's chase these down, finish them off. Grab even more gold. Go ahead and pick up some more nomads. So 25 more nomads. That's becoming a bit of a power stack. Then we've got Zom. So lots of nomads. I think what we want to do is split these into a different stack. And that will probably be fine. Go for it. So a few losses expected. I'm going to try and protect the nomads. Okay, so these guys do move first. And they can kill a stack. Okay, so these have six speeds. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They can't reach us. Do we try and bunch them up? I don't think there's much we can do. Okay, since these have already moved, I'm just going to kill these. We can go in. Two to seven kills. It's probably worth a go. Nope, that was a mistake. Yeah, that wasn't really worth it. Okay, never mind. To kill these off, these can move up. Please kill these. So we did manage to save a few nomads. We can pick up some more skeletons, pick up some more gold. Go south, grab that gold too. Then we've got this guy who can go for some archers. And also go for some gold from the water wheel. So things he can use, 14 rangers, not going to do too much for us. Upgraded armory does cost us wood. So I'm not going to be in a rush to do that. Cathedral also needs a lot of wood. So I think one of the best things we can do is go to the north, take on the nomads just there. Uh, probably also the pikemen, although that's going to be pretty tough. Steel golems, royal mummies and ogres. That's obviously tougher than just going straight to the north. Okay, well we definitely need more than what we have. So I think we're pretty much stuck here for the rest of the week. Might as well, in that case, go and pick up some more arches. Then this guy goes east. Already been to the oasis. Take even more gold. So I'm still not sure the deal with the arena. I guess maybe it's just a one-time use. That might explain it. So the observation tower we've already been to. There is another observation tower to the southeast. Which I might move towards next. And that pretty much just leaves Atlas. So Atlas has already passed across pretty much everything he can. Uh, we do have some gold we can spend, but nothing that's going to actually help us. So in this fight, they have one two hex unit, which is the Bone Dragons. So that is in the second to last slot. So if we were to put the champions there, they could go straight across and go straight for an attack. The problem with that is, for one thing, 21 Bone Dragons should be significantly stronger than 59 champions. Also, it does expose us to the raw mummies, plus the skeletons. So I'm not sure that makes sense. So if we take a close look at this, the main thing we want to kill is the power liches. We want to get to the power liches as quick as we can. So I think we want our walker units. We will leave the champions there, but I don't think I'll go to the top. We'll put the walker units at the top. Okay. So let's just double check this. 181 spell points. Clearly better stats. I think the stats are going to make a difference here. Let's go for it. Okay, so we can see a victory is expected. The losses don't actually look that bad. I'm actually really surprised. I'd rather keep the Red Dragon, of course. Loss of the Cyclops is not surprising. Only one Pikeman. Nine rocks. We'll see what we can do. 
but that has set the bar pretty high. Okay, so first move is ours, Power Lich's move next, best things we can do. Steel Skin is going to be really good if we did go forward to attack. Actually looks like we can't because there's a big rock there which is going to stop us reaching. So obviously not going to go for haste. No point going for Steel Skin in that case, everything's going to be immune to blind. Lightning Bolt, 562 points of damage which is just short of killing a fourth Bone Dragon. So these guys have actually only 9 defense skill. It's lower than I thought. Six on these, six on these, and actually 13 on the Power Liches, which means the most efficient target probably is those. Plus they move next. I wonder if we just go for that. I am really worried about the Bone Dragons, but maybe we just hold back for now. 16 kills on these, or 3 kills on these, I think we go for the 16, could also go for 18 on these, it's not worth doing. 14 on these, probably don't need to. And 140 kills on the skeletons, I think we go for these. Okay, so these things have 5 speeds, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we want to make sure we don't go too close. This will be blocking off the Cyclops, but I think that's fine. Oh wow, okay. Goes for the Mass Haste, doesn't manage to get a kill with the Power Liches, and actually goes for the block. Interesting. Okay, so we should be safe to go for this. Then these can finish them off. Skeletons, I hope, can't reach us. Six speeds, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. They just about can't. If we go for this, perhaps they can. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they definitely can. Still, that's the obvious attack to go for. That would hit the liches. 18 liches exposes us to the skeletons. But the skeletons just skip their turn. I didn't even pick up on that. I can't really make sense of it. I guess their logic is just to hang back. Because they're so focused on range compared to us. But yeah, that means we can deal with the skeletons next turn. We should definitely go for this. Then these guys are free to go in too, so 79 kills will kill these off if we go for these instead. Of course, they have been hasted, but they're still... No, they're faster than everything. Everything except the champions. So if we go for this... Kills most of them off. We can finish these off. Do we just go for these instead? Hard to be sure. I don't think it's obvious. Killing off the Vampire Lords doesn't necessarily help us that much. If they don't move, we can attack through them, kill them off then kill the Power Liches, we can't attack through the Bone Dragons. So I'm going to go for this just because they're so fast compared to everything we have. So we take one loss to that, they go for Steel Skin on the Bone Dragons, they do the double attack on those two, does a big chunk of damage. Uh, now that these things have been Steel Skinned, we can see they're up to 21 defense. These guys are still 20 though. However, I think at this point they're the obvious target. The Bone Dragons are the obvious target for Lightning Bolt. Now if we had to go for haste instead, the other thing we could go for is steel skin on the champions. Take the retaliation from the bone dragons and just try and focus those down. Skeletons do get to go pretty soon. Red dragons still looking pretty healthy. I don't want to take too many losses to the champions, but I do wonder if this is better than just killing off three of these. So they still have 18 left to hit us back. I'm gonna go for Steel Skin, I'm not sure it's the right choice, but I think there is a logic to it. Then we go for this, they hit us back, four champions, not terrible. They're gonna start focusing down the dragons, just about hanging on though. Okay, unfortunately these are slightly too slow to go for the double attack, so we're gonna have to, I think... Well, we're better off attacking the burn dragons, we have already drawn out the retaliation. Let's go for those. Okay, so three to four kills from the pikemen, then red dragons move next. Okay, so the liches do get to move before most of our other stacks, but I still think we're better off probably just focusing these down. 
rather than going for the liches. So the liches do 8 to 10 damage each. These do 25 to 45. I think we still go for these. And yeah, then we have a choice. We either kill off the liches or we go for an extra 1 to 2 kills on the burn dragons. And I think because the champions will get to go before the burn dragons, we should actually go for these. Okay, so they go for Curse against the Pikemen, that's probably fine. 3 to 6 kills if we attack with this. 53 left. Perhaps we go for the Lightning Bolt. Kills 4 off this time, then 3 to 5 kills from these. We do finish them off and they flee. And wow. I really expected a lot worse. I thought that was going to be much more even. I think the swapping of artifacts really helped, like the champions took hits. So much better than I expected. And now we need to make sure we remember to rearrange this. Okay, so units are pretty much fine as they are, we want to keep all of our units on us just to be safe. We definitely want this back, we definitely want this back too. Uh, the Power Axe of Dominion's not too great. Statesman's Quill is really useful to have just in case. We should probably give Sasagan a little bit more room. I'm gonna take the Rabbit's Foot back. Okay, so this guy next. Do you have to be a little bit worried about what could attack us? If we go into the town we could pick up the Nomads. Maybe some more units too. But we should try and prioritize actually building up our towns. So upgraded archery range here is definitely worth having. Uh, jousting arena, everything costs wood. Still need to find a better source of wood. This town's already pretty upgraded, but it's one of a kind, which is not too useful to us. We could upgrade the ivory tower, which wouldn't be too bad. Upgrading the mage guild is also tempting, but I'm going to hold back for now. I think we keep building this one up. Upgrade the archery range in case someone else comes back. Then this town, I think, is pretty much fine. We're going to go for, in fact, what's pointed out to me, I can just scroll through with the left and right keys. So which one is the one we want to really build up a bit more? Thing is, I don't remember them by their names. I think Brownston. Yeah, that's the one that still needs lots of work. Now, upgrading the foundry is not too expensive. We're not going to have too much use for Mercury, so let's just go for it. This town is not worth upgrading. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Could build up the defenses in this town, Weed Patch, but Weed Patch isn't threatened. So yeah, I think we hang on to our gold. Could also do some trading, but it is just day four, so there's no rush to build things up. Okay, so Sasagan, I think, stays aggressive. I think we go back to the idol. And maybe move towards the gold. Atlas can go north instead as well. There's some ore there. There's also a sawmill, which might actually be better to go for. And it does look slightly safer. Okay, let's see how this goes for now. I'm going to spread these out, just in case. And the turn there. Red does go back to defend. Nobody comes from this side, okay. Go back to Atlas. Let's go for this, and let's go east. Oh wow, okay. Sabu. So, several Burn Dragons. He's a lot weaker, but he's still stronger than us. Could try and run past, but I think... Better off just swapping places. So can we reach? We can reach. I do want to stop off the fort, but I guess I could get that on the way back. First, let's see what he actually has. Are we close enough? So, 218 halflings. But only 7 bone dragons. The vampires aren't vampire lords. The rest of that stuff doesn't look too tough. So I think this time we want the... Champions in the center. This fight, they might actually join us. 
but let's go for this. Thing is, we probably don't need to build this guy up anymore. Losses don't look too bad. Okay, so this will be three to six kills. If we go for Lightning Bolt, we can probably finish them off. Do we need to rush in? I think the main thing is we want to make sure we can kill off the Halflings before they go for the attack. So yeah, we're going to go for this. Then we rush in. Do finish them off. They go for Lightning Bolt on those. Doesn't do too much damage. Manage to take a hit with the champion. Send these forward. Hope for morale, which we don't get. These move next. I think we go for the Vampires, but we go for the block on the Halflings. They do hit us back with luck, but they only do 20 damage, which is completely fine. We can go for the Halflings next with these if we want to. It does kill most of them off. These do get to move pretty soon. I think we go for the block on the Liches and deal some damage to the zombies. Okay, for some reason they're choosing to focus on the Red Dragons, which is obviously not going to get them any kills. These can't reach the Power Liches. I think we kill these off. And they flee. Okay, so one loss taken. Not too bad. We've used all of our movement points. There is a stables up there. So I'm wondering if we take... We could take the Cyclops back, like I said, but the Cavalry's I don't think we want to pay for. Okay, so we can go for this. We're not going to go for the... We're not going to go for the Graveyard. We'll go for the Sawmill next, and the Observation Tower, and the Ore Mine. This guy next, let's just go for some gold. Grab the ore. Go west. Grab this stuff too. Get some more skeletons, so we're up to 103 skeletons there. We can pick up some more from this too. This guy grabs some arches. Might as well go to this as well. And start coming back. What is this guy doing? I don't think we've thought that through. The thing is, he's not really strong enough to take on vampires or magi. And this guy can't really back him up either. Okay, so this guy was going to go to the observation tower, which I think is still what we do, especially considering we chose not to go to the the south. See some ghosts just there guarding that. There's actually a warlock town. Interesting that's how they split now. That's quite clever from the AI. That's obviously better than just one stack. I've not seen that before. I did just update this to the latest version of F-Heroes 2, which is I think has some slight changes to AI behavior. But obviously didn't help them too much in the last fight, so that's good. Yeah, I think... I think we don't go for that. Just start coming back. Okay, so this fight I'm not feeling super good about. Yeah, Vampire Lords, everything else. Let's go to the Gazebo. Let's go for Ballistics and could go straight for this. I think maybe we go for the Stables, Mercenary Camp, Fort, and then come back. Attack on Day 7. Let's get Coldray too. Okay, so resources to spend. We have 13 wood, which is not bad. I think we do go ahead and start upgrading some of this stuff. Although, we could go for the Jousting Arena Cathedral also before the end of the week would be very tempting. Maybe go for that instead. So this town's already pretty good. We can upgrade a Cloud Castle if we want to. We can also maybe go towards a Cloud Castle in Brownston. For that, we need the Ivory Tower. So is this worth spending the resources on? We do have a pretty good amount of resources, so I think we do go for it. But at this point, creature production is starting to outstrip the amount of gold we can realistically get. I'm expecting uh, another resource bonus at the end of month too. I could be wrong about that. There's actually a town up there too, I didn't notice that. Elk's Head, the Necromancer Town. I need to be careful of that. Okay, so back to this. This does not cost us any wood, so it's a complete no-brainer. Let's just go for it. Other towns we need to build up. I think it's just this one. Again, Jousting Arena and Cathedral. 
the two things to look out for. I'm not going to go for the upgraded mage guild, that's only worth doing the wizard towns. Marketplace is kind of tempting, but I'm not sure it's worth the investment. Just going to save our resources for now, they actually come out to attack us directly, so not even in the town, and the losses look terrible. We definitely have a stronger force on paper, they come slightly forward. One to three kills if we go straight for the attack. Our spells... Lightning Bolt, 50 points of damage, I think Steel Skin. How long would that last? Only two rounds. If we go for this attack, the Paladins will be able to reach us. Mutant Zombies won't. I'm not sure we want to expose ourselves to the Paladins. But on the other hand, can we haste these? No, we don't have haste, okay. 20 points of damage from Magic Arrow, not very good. If we go for Bless, that's going to increase our damage by quite a lot. 3 kills guaranteed. Their champions have already moved, of course. If we try going for our own block, we can probably protect the rangers. I think that might be best, although actually the Bone Dragons almost certainly come in. Okay, do we Steel Skin or do we Bless? I think we Bless. Because we will be able to retaliate against the Paladins. These have already moved. So yeah, go for the three kills. We do get those. They do indeed go straight for the rangers, they kill most of them off. If we go for this, zero to one kills, we do attack twice. Can these reach afterwards? So one, two, three, four, they can. Pikemen can't. But yeah, I think this is worth doing. So we do get one kill, but we've lost most of the paladins, and yeah, I think the stat difference here is just too bad. 11 against 1, and 5 against 0. Not a lot we can do with this, even with much better units. Yeah, so we have killed off most of the Bone Dragons. We obviously don't have to retreat at this point. Okay, if we're going for this, zero kills. What could we bless next? So blessing the Paladins would help quite a lot. Blessing the Swordsman doesn't help too much. Maybe Steel Skin on the Swordsman could be good. So these four are five speed, so one, two, three, four, five. They can reach our Pikemen, and they probably will go for that. Obviously they're much faster. So there's no point trying to move the champions out of range. I think it's these Vampire Lords I'm most worried about now. But I can only attack them with one stack. So I'm pretty much forced to go for the Bone Dragons. I think because the Swordsmen won't really get attacked, although if we can break through the Bone Dragons, that means the Swordsmen can attack the Vampire Lords, but I'm not sure that's really even in their favour. Plus. I'm not sure we can break through. Yeah, because we have to do 253 points of damage to kill these off. I'm just going to bless these. Then go for this. Five kills, and while wow, they do a ton of damage to those two. Maybe we just absorb the retaliation from this. They do get to move next. Of course, we've already absorbed the retaliation from the Bone Dragons. We've wasted our bless. Can attack these twice. We do get one kill. Let's go for that instead. Just make sure we do as much damage as possible before we almost certainly lose. These absorb the retaliation. These move to the corner. Go for this attack. These back us up. And now we just have to cling on to this corner, which I'm not sure really helps us that much. 22 left, that's not terrible. If we bless, does that help us? Against the likes of Vampire Lords, that might be better than Steel Skin. Though Steel Skin obviously would help us too, we do have 24 spell points, so we don't need to be precious about spell points. I'm gonna go for Steel Skin first. Two kills, three revived, yep, so that doesn't really work. I'll go for this next, but I'm not sure this is the right choice. One Paladin killed. Okay. Well, I'm definitely glad we didn't attack the town, because that would have been even worse. 
We've done better than the auto-resolve. 500 gold will preserve four swordsmen. Fine. So, pretty terrible. Kind of the opposite of what we just did to Orange. This time round, we're clearly on the receiving end of a bad stat disadvantage, but killed off three of their four Bone Dragons, two of their champ- uh, what they called Paladins, five champions. So they don't really have a power stack at this point, maybe the Vampire Lords. Obviously not a good fight, but I do wonder. We can just attack that from a different angle. Okay, so we can see more problems coming from the south. We could re-recruit her here, but I'm also thinking this is not that strong. How many days do we have? Two days, realistically, maybe three. If we recruit her at Antioch, we could get some giants, go west. I don't think we quite reach. But it's not far off. Okay, so do we go south and take this guy on, or do we focus on taking towns? I would have thought we should focus on taking towns. In particular, this could just be a weak scout. Kind of doubt it, but we can get some defenders in this town. And yeah, it is very tempting to get Batorna here instead, because she's obviously not very good, but she is better than nothing. Okay, so this guy first, I think. We're not going to go to the Witch's Hut, because I don't trust it. Let's pick up. Three Nomads. This guy could actually also be a decent defender, if we can keep that town alive. This actually, we should have gone to first, because it's going to tell us exactly what we're up against. So it's Sabu. Sabu's back, but really weak. Uh, if we look around elsewhere, we've also got Dart Vader, with Zounds of Skeletons. I'm not sure where this guy's come from. Well, that could be a problem at some point, but I don't think it stops us attacking this. Because that's producing several Bone Dragons. Okay, let's go to Atlas first. Let's grab the wood. Can still make it to this. So, this reveals unicorns blocking the path, which is fine. There is actually a way through to Yellow's Lands. As tempting as that is, I imagine we're going to have to come back and help defend, because Dart Vader presumably has pretty good stats. He might even be the one from the start who had, yeah, really good stats, like 20 spell power or something. He is presumably their strongest at this point, so if we just go to a Thieves' Guild, see what we can learn. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one with the crazy stats. 26 attack, 19 defense. Crazy spellcasting, significantly better than our best. If he had the 21 Bone Dragons, that would have been a real problem. Got pretty lucky with that. Okay. I think we probably want to face that guy down, but I don't want to miss out on the chance to take this town. Hard to decide what to focus on. I wonder if we just go east instead, that might be faster. Because yeah, we need to send our best to take this guy on. I think he's probably the strongest hero on the map. In terms of stats. Okay, so we can get some more attack if we go east. I can't really see a downside to that. Let's just scout some more too. Okay, so we get some more attack. And we can still get pretty close to the town. So who to move next? This guy doesn't have too much to do. This guy, I think, does have a few things he can do. So he can go to the north, he can take on this stuff. He can go for the elf boots, whatever they're called. Can't remember. Easy fight there. Break through all of this. Grab some gold from this, grab some defense, make sure we get the extra stats before next turn, but that's not going to be possible. By extra stats, I mean extra movement points, of course. Okay, so the graveyard, we're not strong enough to take that on. We have taken the sulfur mine, we want to make sure we take the ore mine too. 
And yeah, sadly not strong enough to take on Elk's Head. So you just gotta go east. This guy grabs the skeleton, so 153 skeletons he's actually started to get going now, and would be maybe a good choice to take on some of these uh take. Take over some of these necromancer towns. Okay, so just these two left. This guy's not really got much to do. Day six, so at this point it does make sense to stay in the town. Wait till the end of the week. I think we do bring this guy up. He should be able to flee before anything happens. Yeah, if the enemy attacks us with phoenixes or champions, it could take us out before we flee. Is this guy worth worrying about? He's level 11, so he's actually pretty good. Wouldn't really want to lose him. So maybe we take a few extra champions next turn. I'm assuming this guy won't come up to attack. It'd be kind of annoying if he did. But he should be scared of Sasagon. That's not necessarily going to stop him, but just worth being aware of. Okay, so next question is, where do we bring back Vatorna? Kind of depends on our resource situation, so 41,000 we can spend. So I think the idea is, we'd go for the upgraded Cloud Castle. We would pick up as many of those seven titans as we can. Then would we be strong enough? We probably wait till day one of next week. I know she's not the best hero. Dimitri, level 14, much better choice but also way too far off. Yeah, that would take too long. Okay, so we're going to go for Vatorna. Going to go for the upgraded Cloud Castle. We've got Wyatch has actually become available to us and is a far better choice. Expert Pathfinding too. I don't think we have enough slots to recruit him though, so we'd have to let someone go. Yeah. Someone would have to go. So Savannah's level 6. I think Vatorna is the one who'd have to go, which is kind of annoying because we only just got her, but I think it makes sense. Like, I don't want to get rid of Zom at this point, although he is kind of... He's nothing special. He does have advanced pathfinding. He's in an okay location. He's doing useful work. Wyatch does solve our stat problem. We will take... One halfling. And we're just going to throw this hero away. So we're going to lose the pendant of life. Don't really care too much about that. It's for the best. She abandons our cause. That is completely fine. Now we're going to go back. Pick up Wyatch. So the necromancy skills may be not that useful to us. We don't have as much gold to spend. Plus 3 attack, 8 defense is not amazing, but we have picked up a lot of new stats. A lot of new spells even. So we can pick up 7 of these. That costs us 14,000 if we were to go for the upgraded cloud castle. Let's just do it. We've invested enough into titans and things. Uh, it may be into our wizard towns even. Maybe it's not the best choice. Because course we did talk about going for the cathedral before the end of the week but I do want to get that town back quite frustrating that red has it I think we obviously stay here for a turn maybe go for some stats and come back probably not worth it but never mind it does actually level us up so we can go for expert archery which is also really useful to have on this guy so we know what our gold's going to be going towards we do want to grab this gold mine too I think we end the turn there So red is stealing our wood supply, which is really annoying. Wow, this guy has a lot of movement points too. I'm hoping we can save Ector. Yeah, we should be faster. So we can see they have 564 skeletons. What useful things can we do? 150 points of damage. That's actually perfect. So we take one of these with us. Then retreat. He's going to let us go for 188 gold. And he still can move further. Does actually go for the town. I thought he wouldn't. That's kind of annoying. Okay, so we just have the one tower helping us out, but that's probably fine. Let's go for a block. I 
I think we can win this. Maybe not. Okay, so the nomads I think are now in range of the centaurs. One to two kills on these, yeah, we definitely stay put. Okay, they do kill us off. Yeah, no way we can win this. It's got a lot of luck. Alright, fine. Someone there too. Purple. Was that purple? Green here too. So this is a weird part of the map. Ah, Sabu's taking all the good units. That's so annoying. I could have stopped that. Okay, so I think we ignore Sabu. We focus on the strongest hero we can. Pretty sure Atlas can't come back and give us those artifacts again. He actually can. I don't think we should mess around with this. Let's get as strong as we can. So, he can have the town if he wants it. This is the real threat. Okay, so we're going to take those things back. So we had the Lucky Rabbit's Foot, and we had the... Parax. And the Lightning Helmet. Okay. I have been recording for over 40 minutes, so I could end the episode here, but I did end on a cliffhanger last time, so I'm, go I'm gonna be nice. We are expected to win, that's good. I should have, of course, I should have, of course, put the, uh, the champions further towards the top. However, this guy cannot possibly reach us this turn, so I'm a bit worried about his spell casting, but first thing is just to do as much damage as we can to these. So he's a 5 speed, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's assume he goes for mass haste or something. I think we just go up to here. Goes for lightning bolt on those, that's fine. So we're not going to make much use of the Cyclops, but not too worried about that. Send these forward. Okay, if we go in, the skeletons can then attack us. We can't kill that many off. So we actually want to avoid those. Yeah, and we can't attack from this angle. So I've got to go for these instead. Okay, so those go down. Fireball, 150 points of damage to three separate stacks. Lightning Bolt, 562 to one stack. Disrupting Ray, minus three defense, not that great. Go for something like Haste. Perhaps the Veteran Pikeman could then reach. That's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that could enable the Veteran Pikeman to get there. But... We're better from range. I think. We do have the Lightning Helmet, of course. Okay, goes for the Haste, and wow, can actually reach the Veteran Pikeman, so I imagine we took quite a few losses there, yeah. About 50 of them. Oh, that sucks, okay. Fine. Do we just go for this? We could then just focus them down, so... Yeah, we'll take a few more losses. I mean, is there any reason to? No, I think we protect these. These take the retail instead. Or we could even go for this. Doesn't do as much as I hoped, but... Maybe that's better. So let's actually have a look. So the skeletons have 6 speed. So really only our champions can move in first, but we can still make that work. Let's go for this instead. Okay, so we're going to do 104 to 208 kills. If we go for Bless, that's going to be 208 kills. If we go for Lightning Bolt into the attack, 
that should kill them off. So not only do we beat him, but we also deprive him of the chance to flee. I oh, know I'm incorrect. What about the mummies? Okay, 52 losses. Even that was much worse. A far weaker force, but did more damage to us just by virtue of those crazy stats. Okay, we need to take Orange out. So I think we need to take this town back. I think I am willing to go just straight for that. I'm going to take the Rangers. And actually, I'm also going to take my good artifacts back. Okay, do we need this? How many moving points do we have? Probably not enough. I think we just go straight for this attack. So the losses look completely fine. I will play this out just because I don't trust that for some reason. I'm not sure why I don't trust that. Obviously, this is a very weak hero. Starting to see how much of a massive difference stats make in this game. Okay, so we can kill off a stack of our choice. Red dragons move before the ogres. So yeah, let's kill these. Okay, one ranger lost to that. I think we do go for this. Okay, they get lucky back, but no way they're strong enough. We get lucky when we retaliate, so we can kill those off. These should skip their turn. These, I think, go for the wolves. Okay, so just the one loss, we do manage to save a few of our rangers' lives, and uh, obviously there's nothing left to recruit. Actually, there is. So they must have low gold. That's good to know. Okay, well, I feel like there are still some nasty surprises to come, and obviously we've not made too much progress in terms of actually taking towns. Uh, I need to start building Wyatch up as well. But we will see how all of that goes in the next episode, so thanks for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.